A Bus Called Heaven by Bob Graham Abandoned The bus appeared one morning from a sea of traffic, right outside Stella's house, where no bus should be. Tired, old and sick, it had a hand-painted sign on it, held down with packing tape. The sign said, Heaven. A Bus Called Heaven by Bob Graham The bus brought change to Stella's street. Traffic slowed where no traffic had slowed before. People stopped and talked together. Just a little, but they talked. Stella changed too. She took her thumb from her mouth, where it usually lived, and said, Mummy, that old bus is sad as a whale on a beach. Then she pushed open the door and climbed on board. Stella, the colour of moonlight, stood among the bottles, cans and rubbish. She was so pale you could almost see through her. It could be ours, she whispered. Whose? asked Nicky, Vicky, Alex, Yasmin and Poe. What did she say? asked Mrs. Demetrius. Ours, she said louder. Well, whoever it is, it needs to come off the road, said Stella's mum. And when Dad came home that afternoon, he found an old bus where the front garden used to be. The wheels stick out on the pavement, he said. There are sure to be regulations. Well, it's staying here, said Stella. That's my regulation. Next morning, Stella looked out of her front window. People sat on the wall, where no one had sat before. Under the bus were Esther, Rajit, Chelsea and Charles. Mummy, said Stella, I'm going out, and she joined them. That day, the bus settled in. Weeds nudged up around the tyres. Snails made silver trails and a pair of sparrows nested in the old engine. While the children played, the grown-ups mopped and scrubbed and polished. That night, the bus saw a bit of new paint. Hello, boys, said Mum. I've got an idea. Come back tomorrow and you can paint the whole bus. Make it sparkle. Next morning, Stella drew a picture for the rats to copy. People came with donations for the old bus. Poppy brought our goldfish, Eric. Luke gave a set of super comics. Stella carried in her table football with a goalie missing. Mrs Stavros brought a bus cake and Lucy lent her dog, Bear, for anyone who needed to just sit and pat something. Life returned to the old bus. Stella's fingers fluttered and her footballers spun. Babies crawled, people laughed, kids fought, Grandads scratched dogs, meetings were planned, couples met, and the Fingals showed their holiday pictures. One Saturday morning, just outside Stella's house, there was music and dancing, there were picnics and laughter, when a tow truck arrived. It's against regulations, said the driver. This bus is causing an obstruction. He means it sticks out, Stella's dad whispered. The bus has to go, said the driver. As the front wheels left the ground, snails dropped from under the bus and a twittering came from the old engine. 
Go where? gasped the crowd. To the boneyard, came the reply. The crowd pleaded for their bus, but the boneyard boss came out to join the driver and shook his head. This one's for the crusher! A little pink glow crept across Stella's cheek. Three rescued snails were deep in her pocket. Excuse me, she said, shall we play table football? You can have the only goalie, but if I win, we'll keep the bus. And why? asked the boneyard boss. Tell me why should I play you for the bus? Because, replied Stella, there are sparrows nesting in the engine. The game began. Handles spun. The ball smacked end to end, then... Goal! Stella scored. She followed that with nine more. And one! The boss put out his hand. Joe, he said. Stella, said Stella, and shook it. Then Stella ran to the front of the bus. Come and see, she said. Chicks! Amid the frantic flapping of the parent sparrow's wings, Joe the Boneyard Boss spoke quietly. Better get your bus to somewhere safe, kid. Somewhere out of the way. Thank you, said Stella, and the crowd cheered. I know where we can take it, said Stella. While the others pushed, she and Mum sat up front to steer, almost back to where they'd started from. And when the old bus came to rest at last, everyone else needed a rest too. Well, almost everyone. That evening, in the vacant allotment just behind Stella's house, music drifted high over the city, and the grass was danced flat around a bus called Heaven. As a full moon rose, three snails slid safely back under the tyres. And tomorrow, Stella will see the sparrow chicks fly for the first time. <laughs>